hey, are you a wannabe fluid artist like me? You know what? If so, you've landed at the right place. I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'm about to put those skills that I've learned in tutorials online on YouTube into practice. So if you're interested, please follow along, stay tuned to the journey. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. And of course, comment because I don't know what I'm doing and I would love to learn from anybody who's willing to teach me. I'll be back in a minute once I prep my canvas. Today, we're gonna do a Dutch pour. A few months ago, I was looking for a hobby. I landed on a bunch of different things. Um, and then based on, you know, space of where I live, where I live, um, you know, kind of dictated that I wanted to learn art. What type of art would I learn? I, I can't draw, so that wasn't going to be an option. Uh, so I found, though, this, this stuff called fluid art, acrylic pouring. So I kind of honed in on that, watched thousands of hours of YouTube videos and tutorials, signed up for some courses, watched a lot of stuff, and I thought, you know what, let's give it a shot. So I, I've done a few, I'm not going to lie. Um, are any of them great? Not really. Um, <laughs> but I'm learning and I'm learning a ton of stuff. And I guess that's why I wanted to start a YouTube channel so that I could, as I'm going through the journey, kind of break down what I've learned. I'm not an expert. Um, some of the people that are on YouTube, they are experts. They actually know what they're talking about, but I'm trying to interpret the stuff that they're saying in their tutorials and I'm struggling. So then I thought, well, maybe if I kind of interpret my interpretation of what I saw in the tutorial and how I either hacked it or did it or did whatever, that that might be useful to others. So here we are today, um, and I'm gonna put in the, some of the stuff that some of them said uh, at the very beginning was, stuff I wish I knew when I started. So those things I have implemented. So I'm gonna run through them now with you, and then we'll kind of just go from there, I guess. All of my paints to start with uh, are Amsterdam acrylics, reason being, is they're here in the Netherlands because that's where I live. So they're not that expensive compared to some of the other acrylic brands. I've even tried craft paints. I have uh, the inexpensive ones and they were great in the beginning as well for learning the technique and trying to figure it all out. Um, but then, you know, I, when I really looked at it and the fact that I was going to do a Dutch pour, the Rinskadana Dutch pour, which is just acrylic paint and water, um, yeah, the, the better the paint, the better the pigment, the more water it can handle. So that's why I have now these. But you know what? You could start out with craft paints. Yeah, you know what? My stuff's not going to hang in the Louvre. I'm not going to go into the Rijks Museum anytime soon. I'm not a Van Gogh. I am not an acrylic pouring savant. So everybody says, first thing I wish I knew, um, don't start with expensive paints. I don't. These are just studio or student grade. So they're not the high end. They do have expert. I can't afford them. I'm not going to use them. And let's be honest, until I'm actually any good, it's kind of a waste of money. It's a moot point. Um, and then why would I start with a Dutch pour? Because a Dutch pour only needed to be mixed with water. Because some things, or at least the Rinskadana way, there's a lot of other artists that use a lot of different methods and a lot of different pouring mediums. It's just something I, else I had to find out and learn about. Um, but the pouring medium rabbit hole was way too complicated for me. Uh, you've got Floetrol, stuff I've never even heard of. Uh, I don't know, some type of paint conditioner that acry acrylic artists now use in order to uh, water down the, or liquefy the paints so that you can actually pour them. Floetrol dries in a, in a matte finish, so not so great. Um, especially if you've seen some videos before, you'll see that nice glossy look it has at the end while well, the paint's still wet. It doesn't dry that way. So then you gotta figure out something else. So that really wasn't an option. Plus, in the US, I understand, their Flood Floetrol, so Flood's the brand name, I guess, of the Floetrol. Uh, that Floetrol is uh, cheap. Yeah, super cheap. It's inexpensive, so it makes sense for them. Or they use Elmer's uh, glue all or something, uh, PVA glue. Well, yeah, over there, that stuff's really cheap. Um, Australia has their own brand of flood troll. I don't live in Australia and to import it here into the Netherlands, that's gonna be expensive. And it's completely different. So how they tell you to mix the American flow troll, it's completely different than the way the Australians are doing it. And then here in Europe, you can't even get flow troll. You can, you can get flow troll, but you can't get the flood brand that everybody else is using. Um, unless you're going to pay an arm and a leg on somebody's Etsy shop or whatever who's already imported it. So that doesn't really work. So here they've got this stuff called Owatrol, which happens to be Floetrol. And that is more money than a one liter thing of studio grade acrylic paint. 
who in their right mind, but, and it drives mad. I, I don't want it. So I'm not ever probably going to use our troll, flow troll, whatever. Not going to happen. So then there's other pouring mediums. There's this GAC 800 that's supposed to help with crazing and cracking. Well, that's fine, but I can't get that here. I've looked online, everybody's sold out. There's no product availability. I have seen some YouTube videos where some people have said, yeah, they've rebranded it, changed the name. And then if it's the high gloss pouring medium that they have, it's super expensive as well. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not going into the Rikes Museum. I'm not even gonna sell this stuff. It's gonna either hang in my house or I'm gonna give it away. Um, until maybe I get decent, decent before I would ever attempt to sell something. So yeah, that's where I'm at with the, with the pouring medium. Yeah, I don't know. I, I will probably experiment it with it in the future, but for right now, I'm just going to try to keep it simple. Is the Dutch pour a simple technique? No, no, it's not. Everybody will tell you it's not an easy technique, but it was an easier technique as far as mixing. Um, so I just do a 50, 50, I follow Rince Kadana's method. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Why would I do that? So I mix 50%, uh, acrylic paint, 50% water. That's why I have a scale. I don't use the scale so much anymore because the scale was great in the beginning. Cause if it's going to be 50, 50 or 60, 40, cause again, it's not always 50, 50. You know what? Different colors mix differently. You won't always use a 50-50. It's a good rule of thumb, but it's not the end-all be-all. It's not the Bible of acrylic pouring. So scale was kind of handy. I also bought silicone cups. I used to use paper cups, but the silicone cups are kind of handy because uh, I feel like I'm not wasting the environment and destroying the environment. And after I'm done with this today as a pour, I have little containers of juice bottles um, that I will pour this paint in and use for future stuff. And then in a couple of days though, this little, whatever the residue of paint is in here, it will dry and you can just peel it out right out of the silicone cup. I also use these skewers. I think they might be sushi skewers. I don't like sushi, so I really don't know, but I think that's what they are. And I use them for mixing and I reuse them. I just kind of whip the tips off after I'm done mixing my paints. Um, and then they dry in a day or so, and then I can reuse them to mix paints in the future. I use puppy pads. Puppy pads are great. They absorb whatever um, spills on the table, whether it's water, whether it's paint or whatever, and it saves everything else that's around me. Um, what else can I tell you? I don't know what else to tell you. I'm sure things will come up. Oh, paint consistency, that matters. Yeah, as you can see, I put a dot, drop of each one on paper. Yeah, they say that do it on paper or cardboard. The problem is, is that paper is absorbent. So when I lay my first dot down to check the consistency, because I'm going to do the run, running test or whatever, uh, the, the paper starts to absorb the water. So of course it's going to flow slower. So is that a perfect method? No, it's a decent place to start. But by the time I get the same quantity of paints all the way down on my little piece of paper and tilt it, a few uh, 10, 15 seconds have gone by. So of course the drip test, so the only thing you can do is just play with the paint and it's watery. It's more watery than you'd ever imagine. That's why the scale is important too, right? For a Dutch pour. And there comes the other problem. Dutch pours are really liquidy, uh, really fluid paint. But if you're going to do other acrylic pouring techniques, the paint's thinner. So you can't really pre-mix paint when you're just beginning and go, okay, well, I'll take on my black because I love to use black as my base like I do and add a whole bunch of water to it because, and then get it to the right consistency. You're like, woo, I did it. You know, it's not gonna help you because you can't use that black now for anything else other than a Dutch pour or something that uses like a very thin, thin, thin consistency paint. So then you gotta thicken it up. What are you gonna thicken it up with? More paint? Mm, it's an option, but then you're, then you're adding more water, you're trying to get it right. And if you're just beginning, you're trying to measure stuff. It, it gets confusing. I'm sorry, but yeah, it's a little bit more complicated than just I'll dump in some water and stir it or pouring medium. So, boy, I'm talking a lot and I have lots to say. I have lots to tell you um, because, again, this is the things that I've learned along the way. So the best I'm going to do today is I'm going to Dutch pour, which is, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to flood the base, which is a cheap little canvas that I bought. Yep at the little craft store. Uh, it's 20 by 20 thin. They call this a gallery wrap, I guess, because it's stapled on the back as opposed to having like the little nails along the side. I tape the back of my canvas. They recommend to do that. Again, tips I wish I knew. I did follow those. Um, 
so that the paint doesn't get all over the back of the canvas and get kind of messy. I use little push pins. That helps me level a, a crappy canvas, you know, because they're not always level by the time you get them home or you got some moisture. Here in the Netherlands, it rains like 24 seven. Um, and then you put the little push pins in there. It helps me be able to pick it up and do something with the canvas. It also helps me level the canvas so that I don't get up in the morning and my paint's all slid off the side because it's fluid and water runs off. So that's not so helpful either. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything else, else that I can tell you. So I guess at this point, I'm gonna stand up. You're gonna lose my face. I'm gonna probably uh, increase the music so that you, you, know, you don't have to listen to my brain just kind of you know, dump crap out through my mouth for you to listen to. And we're gonna go, I'm gonna do a demonstration of my method of the Dutch pour, which is very similar to Rinse Kadana. I don't know if it's gonna work out or not. We're gonna find out. If it doesn't, it doesn't, life goes on. I also have a creme brulee torch because for air bubbles, I don't know if I've already said this, if I have, I'll edit this out, um, but the air bubbles. So when you get air bubbles, you're going, cause, okay, back up. When you mix your paints, you're gonna get air bubbles, right? Water, I don't know, you just get air bubbles and you stir them, uh, you don't stir them, you don't do anything, you get air bubbles. So then when you pour your paint, the air bubbles are gonna be on the surface so you're gonna to torch it, and that the, the heat from the torch gets rid of the air bubbles. Some people say, well, you could wait 24 hours, that's recommended between uh, pores, and then you can minimize the air bubbles. I've tried that, that doesn't work for me. Um, the following day I come back, I look at the paint, and you know what, all the air bubbles are just now floating on the surface of the paint. They're still there, they're still gonna come out, I'm still gonna pour them on my canvas, so I, I don't see the point. Hey, listen, these are things that I've learned. If you've had a different experience or you got better ideas, I'm all open to hearing them. Please like, subscribe, put on your notifications, go down in the bottom, leave me a comment. I'm tempted to try it. I'll try anything at least once. Well, I, I say anything, probably not everything. No, I won't bungee jump. I'm not going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this paper because if I don't, um, it's going to blow all over when I get my blow dryer out. And uh, yeah, let's see the magic happen, if I can create any magic. I don't know if I can. We're about to find out. So we're gonna flood the canvas. We're gonna flood it in black today. I like to use black. Yeah, as you can see, this is my living room. I've got black furniture, black walls. Yeah, I'm a dark and moody kind of person, I guess. So I'm gonna flood my canvas, then I'm gonna blow it out. And I guess you're gonna watch me or I'm gonna edit this out. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. So here we go. So here you can see I'm covering all the sides. You kind of want to cover them ahead of time. And I'm going to torch the canvas just to get rid of all the air bubbles. Put some hair with some tweezers. I always have them handy. And now I'm going to just layer in my paints and pour little puddles in the middle. Watching a soap opera. I feel your hands on my body. Wish we were getting naughty. Oh, I'm just getting started. And then I'm gonna pour a ring around a black, the base coat around the outside. Flame it one more time. And now I'm just gonna blow it out with the blow dryer. I'm gonna blow over the paint. See the black, blow over, torch it again. And I'm just gonna quickly blow it out. You don't wanna overblow it. So just, you know what, stop when you're ahead. <laughs> and then you can blow it out with your mouth after that to get the kind of shape and composition that you're looking for. And then one last quick torch to make sure there's no bubbles. So here it is from my perspective, I guess. I don't know how well my camera's gonna pick this up, but we're gonna try. So here we come in a little bit closer so you can see the colors of how, and see how beautiful the glass is, like you, or the glossy finishes. You can, you can wave my hand, you can see me. Yeah, so it's really, really pretty. However, when it dries, it's not going to be this pretty shiny. So then eventually we're gonna have to wait a few weeks before we can do anything about that. However, in a couple of days when this is dry, I am going to show you the dry result um, before I post this video. Well, 48 hours have passed and uh, this is now dry to the touch. So as I mentioned, you know, when you were watching just a, uh, eight seconds ago, <laughs> 48 hours ago, uh, the wet result, this is the dry result. So as you can see, 
Um, yeah, the colors are still pretty, don't get me wrong. Acrylic paint though by nature is more of a matte finish. It's not really gloss. However, I did use um, some metallic paints. I'll put in the description below the paints that I actually used to create this. Um, but as you can see, it's got a bit of a matte finish. It's still very pretty. I mean, I, I do love the color combination, etc. Um, however, if you really want the gloss finish, then you're gonna have to either varnish or resin. Um, yeah, and I will do a later video. Uh, this is gonna take a few weeks to completely cure and dry before you would wanna varnish or resin. I mean, there's a few school of thought. Some people don't wait for very long. I think it depends on how thick the paint was on the canvas and then how long it took to dry um, and how big the canvas is and how much paint you had on it to determine how long you'd really have to wait in order to varnish. But I like to err on the side of caution just because I've ruined a few paintings just with the varnishing technique. I don't even wanna go down the road that says I didn't wait long enough and the paint was still wet. So uh, regardless, um, yeah, uh, there's a few other little Dutch pours that I've done, and I haven't done many, I, I've done a few, um, that I've embellished. So there's this one, which is like a little flower, I guess you'd say, or I, I don't know what to call it. Um, and then there's these ones that I also do, which there's a playlist at the end of the video that you can link into, uh, which has, uh, which I embellish the, the dresses. And I embellish these with a stick and I do it when it's wet. I don't, there's some artists that actually, artists, <laughs> I use that term loosely when applying it to myself. But there's some that embellish after the fact. They wait till it's dry and then they go in with the paintbrush and the acrylic paint and then they put a design over top. I actually do this while the canvas is still wet. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching to the end. Um, I know I don't have a whole lot of subscribers and hopefully you find my content interesting though. And if you do and you wanna learn with me as I go through this journey so that we can all make the mistakes together, um, by all means, like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. I try to post twice a week, um, every Tuesday and every Saturday. Um, currently, anyway, that's the plan. Uh, and again, like I said, I'm a firm believer in forever learning. So if you've got a comment or a tip you wanna share or anything like that, that I could do this better, which is this is the one that you saw, um, by all means, you know, let me know. Um, and I, again, right at the end, I'll put the side by side of this, the dry versus the wet. And then eventually in the future, I will link this to the varnishing technique finish that I do and hope, hope I don't ruin it. Anyway, thanks again for watching all the way to the end. Um, ciao for now, uh, until my next video, which hopefully will be Saturday. <laughs> thanks again. Have a great week. But I'm ready.